Hey, folks, welcome to Fight Off the Bone. Shane, how you doing today? Man, I'm good. It's pretty out here. We get to cook. It's great. Yep. What you gonna cook today? Well, uh, we've done ribs before, uh, and when we did it last time, we used the pellet grill, which a lot of people love. Some people have charcoal grill, so uh, you're gonna do ribs. I do the three, two, one method. You got a different method, so we're gonna cook a rack of ribs, or you are, on this uh, Weber charcoal grill, which is probably still, would you say, probably the most sold grill in America? Best grill, if, if you had to buy one grill and own it, a Weber kettle is the grill to have. I agree. I'll tell you what, I, this rib recipe or, or method of cooking, uh, my, one of my brothers taught it to me many, many years ago. And here's, here's the deal on this rib, the way we're going to cook it. This is not a competition rib. You wouldn't win a competition with it, and not because of the taste, but the, the criteria for turning ribs in a competition. The method, yeah. And I'm going to tell you, I've, I've done a few competitions. They're just really, I've got some, some reasons that I don't do competitions. Um, we like to cook, not for We people. like to cook. Yeah, I like to cook for people, not judges. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, but this, this method of cooking is the scenario and one of the reasons we have the channel. It's late Saturday afternoon. You've been working in the yard or whatever you've been doing. It's maybe 4 o'clock, and you'd like to have a rack of ribs, but you don't have time to spend five, six hours smoking a rack of ribs. This is a quick way of doing ribs, and I promise you, once you try it, you'll fall in love with it, and everybody that I've ever shown how to do this way of ribs, call me back and go, I found my new way to do ribs. Like I, I have spent the last two hours washing this Polaris and I, you know, I ain't got time to. <laughs> well, you are, you do have a working cattle farm Somebody's here. Somebody's gonna so comment I, about how dirty this, that people well, say, why don't you wash this thing? I said, because the same reason I don't get on a treadmill, I'm lazy. Well, you know, <laughs> with a sharp pencil doesn't get any work That's done. That's right. Something like that. But uh, we're gonna, we're gonna do a, some St. Louis ribs and, uh, we're going to get back and, and get set up, but I promise you, if you'll, if you'll try this method of cooking, it's very simple. Well, you got me you got me wondering because I'm, I'm not familiar with it at all, so I'm, I think I'm as curious as they are about yep. it. Yep, well, it'll be good. So uh, let's roll out of here, and we'll get, we'll get to cooking. All right. See you back in a minute. All right, folks, so we're going to use the Weber kettle grill to uh, cook these ribs. It's really speedy method of cooking ribs. Listen, don't don't be hating until you see the end product. <laughs> you got me so Kelly. curious, man. I don't know what to think. I, uh, I'm looking at a charcoal grill, and you're talking about how speedy it's going to oh, be. I'm, yeah. I'm wondering, man. I promise you, and we'll, we'll go over everything that you need. One of my favorite ways, and we're going to use a chimney to, to light our, our coals, and we're going to be using, I, Shane and I differ on this. I like lump. I found this bag at one of the local uh, grocery stores. Never tried it before, but we're going to test it out today. It's probably just some house brand made by... You have to imagine Kingsford. they probably ain't but two or three places in the world that actually make it. They yeah. put it in different bags. You know, I, I got into a discussion with someone the other day. They were talking about Walmart charcoal mm -hmm. and they were the pros and cons. Walmart don't make charcoal. Mm -hmm. it's, it's one of the major brands makes it. So. It's, it's, I think you could take a, a cheap wine, put it in a fancy bottle, and people fall in oh, love yeah, with absolutely. it. absolutely. You're a wine drinker, right? No. <laughs> Keystone Light. Keystone Light. Now, listen, I, I don't dislike love. I just, uh, for long cooks, I like briquettes better. And I, I, it has grown on me using it cooking hamburgers, chicken thighs, steaks, things like that. It really does get hot. If you yeah. want a hot fire, lunch gets hot. It does. And I like it because I feel like I can control the heat. It's yeah, a little more right. responsive to the vents. But these little Weber lighter cubes i have been using these for years and they're basically a gelled alcohol uh -huh. they, these things are great i i don't use newspaper uh we have used newspaper in some some other videos Just to but show I, you, yeah. yeah but i like these and i'll show you how these these work so i place them down in here put my charcoal on top and the thing about lump charcoal is is if I need to add some, I'm not worried about any kind of fillers or binders that now, may be in it. I will tell you this, uh, one, you've used lump a lot more than I have, so as he's getting this going, I will say this, uh, lump, I, it took me some getting used to because when you get that chimney going with lump in it, it does not take anywhere near the amount of time for that charcoal to be ready as it does briquettes. Lump charcoal gets ready a lot faster. So we've got those going and this will take 
don't know, it took about 10 minutes for, yeah. this, for this lump to get going. Uh, and while we're doing that, we're gonna get the ribs ready and I'm gonna explain everything that you need when you run down to your local supermarket after you've been on the lawnmower all day and you want those ribs and uh, you just don't have time to do a, a long smoke on them. But we'll be, uh, we'll be getting those ready here while our charcoal's getting hot. All right, folks, so here we got the charcoal going. Uh, and it's coming along it's coming along nicely there uh, with those uh, lighter cubes and so here's what you're going to need to do this method of rib cooking one you're going to need going to need your ribs and we have a big slab of uh, st louis ribs and i haven't trimmed them up yet i'm going to work on that but here's some other things that you're going to need if you want to use a, a a rub here's what we use now Folks, we, we buy all of this stuff. None, we don't. Nobody gives us anything for our YouTube videos. Uh, if you, you can, if you want to. But we, uh, I found this called Twisted Q, and they make a whole line of rubs. And this cane and maple is great. Um, I've used it on ribs a lot, and it's made in Kansas City. And I, wherever you are in the world watching this video, I'm not sure if this is well, Kansas City. I'm sure it's just not a regional rub. Uh, but not every store carries it. So. If you can find that, give it a shot. It's about $4. And then I found some rib rack barbecue sauce honey. Never tried it before, uh, but we're going to try it today. The other things that you're going to need, you're going to need some, uh, some tin foil, aluminum foil. And let me give you a little pointer. On every roll of tin foil that you buy, there's these little half circles. For years, I didn't even pay attention or know what they are. But if you'll push those in, it locks in the roll so you don't have a roll fall out. So there's one on both sides. So every time you get a new roll of tin foil or aluminum foil, it's not made out of tin, but that's the country in me. Just push those in and it'll lock in. The other thing that you're gonna need is turkey oven bag. Originally, I started out using um, plastic wrap and that'll work. But once I started putting them in an oven bag and I'll show you that, you really, uh, you're really gonna like that. So we got this this rack of ribs here, and there's a lot of there's a lot of meat here, and I'm just gonna trim off this. And I'd like to thank Blue Tick Forge uh, for the for the butcher knife they made me some time back. It is uh, it is sharp, and it it has got a well made design for it. Now, I'm not throwing this meat away. Don't don't get upset out there in YouTube land. But I like to trim up a little bit. There's the last bone. I'm just going to take this off. Shame people have always heard you eat with your eyes first. And I've always wondered when I go to restaurants that are dimly lit <laughs> what I was eating. But I guess that was being romantic. So getting all that now, there's a whole argument or whole discussion about taking this membrane off the back. I have taken it off the back, and again, this isn't a competition rib. I'm not doing surgery on these or cosmetic surgery. And I'm not going to pull that off. It, at the end, when you see the final product, you'll, you'll see one reason why I don't. But I, I am going to score it just a little bit. People talk about, well, if you take it off the back, you get the rub down in here. You're just rubbing the bone. So we're going to have plenty of flavor. So don't, don't worry about taking the membrane off. So again, I'm going to take my little uh, cane and maple twisted cue. I'm going to be very liberal with this. Kind of pat that in good. And you notice we don't wear gloves. A lot and I've, I've talked about this before I think people get a false sense of, of cleanliness with gloves I'm gonna go wash my hands when I get done with this so people that wear gloves I I go through drive throughs and they've got gloves on but they don't take them off between handling everybody's card it just it just don't make no sense so here this is uh, rub down here this is that's some, that's some country right there we're gonna let this sit on on this meat just a moment we'll, we'll throw this on to, to eat on and we're only talking about maybe an hour and a half for this whole cook 
so we're gonna get the we're gonna get the charcoal dumped out here get the grill up the temp and we'll be right back and show you how to put these ribs on all right so our charcoal is uh is the chimney's ready we're gonna spread this out in our weber and so you're not you're not really worried about indirect on this you nope. just okay not at all and i'm gonna add a little bit of more a little bit of more again that's good good country talk we're gonna throw some put some more lump on there don't put a smidgen more a little smidgen more or as they always say in nascar they always come in for a splash of fuel that's right so we're gonna throw a splash of charcoal on there and put the grate on now this isn't a reason that you needed the needed the aluminium pull so here's a here's a quick tip if you if you forgot your grill brush just get you some tin foil and it works just as good on bottom vent is open I want as much airflow as I can the top vent stays open I don't adjust my temperature by the top vent I adjust my temperature by the bottom vent and one of the reasons for that is is I don't want to hold a lot of smoke in you can get too much smoke on meat uh, and then it'll it, it just gets a bitter flavor so I leave this I will not adjust the top vent I might adjust the bottom one but the grill's gonna get around 350, and that's all we're gonna need for the way we're gonna cook these ribs today. So, that's gonna heat up. So here's what you're doing. Our, our rub's been on here for maybe 10 or 15 minutes, and it's soaking in well. All I want you to do is put your ribs on the grill we're going to give them a little bit of char and they'll sit there and we'll be back in a few minutes uh, I put bone side down I want to get those bones heated up and that'll help cook cook the meat anytime you got bone uh, large bones or like a pork butt or pork shoulder that meat will help that bone when it gets hot will help cook from the inside and of course all these bones in this rib we're going to get it warm so that's all we're doing there all right and we'll give that a few minutes and we'll be right back. All right, folks, so we had the ribs on. Oh, I got that smoke coming off. Let's find my little, little hanger. So all you're going to do, look at that nice char on those ribs, and that's what we're looking for. So we're going to just put those, uh, we're going to put that the, the real meat side down. I'll get those little, those little hangers out there. So that's what we're looking for. We're getting that good smoky flavor on these ribs and getting the char we're going to let stay on this side maybe another 10 15 minutes uh go uh, go hydrate while you're doing this maybe go clean up from, from the yard work or whatever you were doing uh, relax a little bit and then we're going to come back and show you the the secret to doing these ribs speedy okay folks so our ribs have been cooking i've, I've I've charred them up on both sides, and, and we flipped them just a few minutes ago. Now, I'm thinking, right now, it's been, what, 25 minutes total? 25 minutes. Got them, uh, and, and this right here, this blackening comes from the sugar that was in that rub. Now, these ribs right here, you can't eat them. They're, they're not done to eat. So here's the way we're going to do the, the, the speedy cook on this. Now, you rib purists will be hating. <laughs> Again, this is so what you want to do you want to get your, your foil out. It's windy out here at Foggy Ridge today, Shay. Yeah it is. You get your uh, oven bag and make sure you get a turkey size oven bag. What kind of voodoo is this? I'm telling you. This folks will make your mouth happy. Get it open. Yeah, we're gonna do some fancy editing on that. 
Very good. All right. Now take you a little bit of your sauce, and, and this is a new sauce that I found. It's, I'm sure it's not new, but it's new to me. Again, Rib Rack Barbecue Sauce does not sponsor us. We I bought this. You're going right in the bag with use it? Use any sauce you want. That's right. It don't get any easier than that. You see, with this lid off, we start to get some fire. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take these ribs. And I'm going to put right inside of this turkey bag. And then this is going to go in here just like this. Now inside here, they're going to give you a little tie, a little twist tie. I don't need that. You don't need it. You can use it. Do this. Let's get some air out because this is really... Had a had a guy I used to work with Shane in the fire department that said if a little's good, a lot's got to be better. So I'm gonna go ahead and just wrap these twice, just just to seal up good. All right, folks. So take this. We're gonna put back on our grill. Now, I'm not going to adjust the top vent. I'm just going to cut the airflow down just a tad. And this is where you go relax. You put on some good music, your favorite beverage, and just hang out and talk with family or friends. And we're going to come back to this in about an hour. You don't have to worry about adjusting anything. Nothing can burn. Uh, we're not. I'm not worried about temps. But that, those ribs inside that bag are basically going to steam. And that, that sauce is gonna, gonna get into the meat. And when we take those off, they will be absolutely fall off the bone. So you probably don't have an hour and a half in this whole cook. So again, a good late afternoon, you wanted ribs, a good speedy way of doing that. So we'll be back uh, after these ribs finish cooking and show you what they're like. All right, folks, our ribs have been in our oven bag wrapped in in full for about an hour now. Again, you've been out relaxing, taking care of your favorite beverage there while you're grilling. Look at there. Yeah. I'd be on our blooper reel. <laughs> so our bag, so it, it has steamed those ribs in here, and, and this is natural. This is gonna happen to uh, for this to come out. And boy, that's a bunch of goodness. I wish we had smell of vision. So, got my gloves on. We're going to bring these over. Mm, I'll be done. I, I, folks, I've never seen anything like that. It makes perfect sense when you see it done. See how that meat's pulling back from the I bone? Mean, that's a that's what you get on a six-hour cook, folks. That's that's the look you're going for on a six-hour cook. And like Rodney said, no competition people wouldn't like it, but if you're cooking for your family, I, I can look at that and tell you that's going to be a good rack of ribs. You're absolutely there. right. Look how those bones are pulled. Oh, yeah. Pulled back. Folks, that is cooked to perfection. That right there, folks, will make your mouth happy. So, again, running late in the day and you want some good ribs, go get you uh, go get you a rack, get whatever spice, whatever, rub. whatever rub, whatever barbecue sauce you want to use. That's up to you. You know, buy the cheapest thing, buy what's on sale. And get you an oven bag and char it off and put it in that oven bag, Shane, and let it sit on there for an hour while you go do some other things. So, so just, just to recap, make sure I get this right for people, Rodney. You basically are 
about 15 minutes per side charring these ribs. That's right. Into an oven bag, double wrap in aluminum foil, another hour on the same grill, and it's done. And leaving them alone. You don't have to worry about temperature. Just pour your sauce you in the bag so you'll... That's right. You don't have to worry about all that time. It's not a science experiment. It's not baking. We're going to get to some baking later. Baking's very specific about times and amounts. This is an easy way to go. You know, if you're off doing something, you go, oh, I got those ribs. You're fine. I'm in They're just sitting there in that bag. So give that a little taste test, Shane, see how you like it. Oh, man. I, I would, I'll say it this way. I would be willing to bet you couldn't get, you couldn't tell the difference. If you had a rack of these laying in front of you and a rack of ribs that were cooked, say, three, two, one, I'll bet you you couldn't pick which was which. This is a, uh, I learned something here today that I will absolutely use that method. That's impressive. Thank you, James. Folks, join us again. Remember, go to Fat Off the Bone and subscribe. It's free. And we'd like to hear your comments. Come on. I can move that around my mouth. <laughs> We'd like to hear your comments. Another one for the blooper That's reel. That's right. And if you see anything that you'd like for us to cook, comment, and we'll try to get to it. Y'all have a great day.